one of the obstacles to amateur radio for some newbies is uh, the terminology. It might seem from some videos that I'm talking in foreign language or perhaps even in tongues, but trust me when I say it will get easier. In 1975, I picked up my first copy of White Magazine. It was a publication dedicated to the emerging microcomputer market. Uh, it predated Apple, Microsoft, and all the other commercial personal computers. It was a brave new world back then. And I hardly was familiar with any of the jargon. Nevertheless, I was convinced that the magazine pointed to the future and I bravely learned as much as possible. Sadly, the magazine was discontinued in 1998 when homebrewed computers had long since given way to mass production. The point is, don't let not understanding a few terms distract you from your goals. By the end of this course, you will know more than enough to qualify as a technician class operator. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is lesson one, part five of my amateur radio technician class licensed course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I am your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license. I've been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years now. The sub-element T1 section covers the FCC's commission rules. Six exam questions will be randomly selected from the sub-element T1. The commission's rules are divided into six groups with a total of 67 questions. Today we will cover Tango 1 Echo, Control Operator, Eligibility, Designating, Privileges, Duties, Location, Required, Control Point, Control Types, Automatic, and Remote. We need to understand that an amateur station may never transmit without a control operator. I suppose that implies we shouldn't let our computer AI programs use our transceivers. If you saw the movie, The Terminator, you know it didn't turn out so well. With Skynet, especially when Skynet uh, used the airwaves to send all those robots to destroy us humans. The question comes from Part 97.7 titled, Control Operator Required. Then it says, when transmitted, each amateur station must have a control operator. Notice that the control operator must be a person. The exam question reads something like this. When may an amateur station transmit without a control operator? A, when using automatic control, such as in the case of a repeater, B, when the station licensee is away and another licensed amateur is using the station. C, when the transmitting station is an auxiliary station. Or D, never. If you answer D, never, maybe you just saved the human race. If not, please try again. It is good to know that any amateur allowed to transmit on the satellite uplink frequency may be the control operator of a station communicating through an amateur satellite or a space station. We find this in part 97.207, space station. It says that any amateur station may be a space station. A holder of any class operator license may be the control operator of a space station subject to the privileges of the class of the operating license held by the control operator. The exam question is, who may be the control operator of a station communicating through an amateur satellite or space station? A, only an amateur extra class operator. B, a general class or higher licensee with a satellite operator certification. C, only an amateur extra class operator who is also an AMSAT member, or D, any amateur allowed to transmit on the satellite uplink frequency. 
The correct answer, of course, is D. Any amateur allowed to transmit on the satellite uplink frequency. You should know that the station license must designate the station control operator. This comes from part 97.103, station licensee responsibilities. The station licensee must designate the station control operator. The exam question looks like this. Who must designate the station control operator? A, the station licensee, B, the FCC, C, the frequency coordinator, or D, any licensed operator? We know, of course, that the answer is A, the station licensee. We should have figured out that the class of an operator license held by the control operator determines the transmitting frequency privileges of an amateur station. This comes from part 97.103, station licensee responsibilities. The station licensee must designate the station control operator. The FCC will presume that the station licensee is also the control operator unless documentation to the contrary is in the station records. Our test question is, what determines the transmission frequency privileges of an amateur station? A, the frequency authorized by the frequency coordinator. B, the frequencies printed on the licensee's grant. B, the frequencies printed on the license grant. C, the highest class of an operator license held by anyone on the premises, or D, the class of operator license held by the control operator? The obvious answer is D, the class of operator license held by the control operator. We must understand the amateur station's control point is located where the control operator function is performed. This comes from part 97.3, definitions. It defines the control point as the location at which the control operator function is performed. Our exam question may be, what is the amateur station's control point? The location of the station's transmitting antenna, the location of the station's transmitting apparatus, the location in which the control operator function is performed, the mailing address of the station licensee. We know from studying the definitions that our, our answer is C, the location in which the control operator function is performed. Understand that at no time under normal circumstances may a technician class license be the control operator of a station operating in an amateur extra class band segment. This comes from part 97.301, authorized frequency bands. For the amateur extra segments, we can read that for a station having a control operator who has been granted an amateur extra class operator license, who holds a CEPT radio amateur license, or who holds a class one IARP license. This means the control operator must hold an amateur extra or an international equivalent. The exam question looks something like this. When under normal circumstances may a technician class license E be the control operator of a station operating in an amateur extra class band segment? A, at no time. B, when designated as a control operator by an amateur extra class licensee. C is part of a multi operator contest team. D when using a club station whose trustee holds an amateur extra class license. If you answered A at no time, great job for paying attention. We need to know that when the control operator is not the station licensee, the control operator and the station licensee is responsible for the proper operation of the station. We can find this information in part 97.103, station licensee responsibilities. In uh, subparagraph A, 
The station licensee is responsible for the proper operation of the station in accordance with the FCC rules. When the station control operator is a different amateur operator than the station licensee, both persons are equally responsible for proper operation of the station. On the exam, it may look something like this. When the control operator is not the station licensee, who is responsible for proper operation of the station? A, all licensed amateurs who were present at the operation. B, only the station licensee. C, only the control operator. Or D, the control operator and the station licensee. If you answer D, the control operator and the station licensee, Great job. We need to know that repeater operation is an example of automatic control. So what is meant by automatic control? In part 97.3 definitions, we learned that the use of a device and procedures for control of a station when it is transmitting so that it's in compliance with the FCC rules is achieved without a control operator being present at the control point. We're going to talk about repeaters more later. In part 97.205, we learned that a repeater may be automatically controlled. On the exam, you're going to see something like this. Which of the following is an example of automatic control? A, repeater operation. B, controlling a station over the internet. C, using a computer or other device to send CW automatically or D, using a computer or other device to identify automatically. If you answered A, repeater operation, you're correct. We need to know that the following is required for remote control operation. First, the control operator must be at the control point. Secondly, a control operator is required at all times. And thirdly, the control operator must indirectly manipulate the controls. This comes from part 97.109, station control. When a station is being remotely controlled, the control operator must be at the control point. Any station may be remotely controlled. One way to remotely control a transceiver is with the right software and controllers. Some even use low cost computers called Raspberry Pis. We can talk about this more later. Your test could have this question. Which of the following is required for remote control operation? A, the control operator must be at the control point. B, a control operator is required at all times. C, the control operator must indirectly manipulate the controls. D, all these choices are correct. If you answer D, all these choices are correct, then you are rocking the amateur radio world. We should know that operating a station over the internet is an example of remote control as defined in part 97. Here is the part 97.3 definition. Remote control, the use of a control operator who indirectly manipulates the operating adjustments in the station through a control link to achieve compliance with the FCC rules. This is a screenshot of an example of uh, remote control uh, software. Many such programs not only work on computers, but some work on tablets and smartphones as well. On the exam, you might see this question. Which of the following is an example of remote control defined in part 97? A, repeater operation. B, operating the station over the internet. C, controlling a model aircraft, boat, or car by an amateur radio. D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer is B, operating the station over the internet. We need to know that the FCC presumes the station licensee to be the control operator of an amateur station unless documentation to the contrary is in the station records. This comes from part 97.103, station licensee responsibilities. The station licensee is responsible for the proper operation of the stations in accordance with the 
FCC rules. When the control operator is a different amateur operator than the station licensee, both persons are equally responsible for proper operation of the station. Our final question in lesson one, part five is, who does the FCC to presume to be the control operator of an amateur station unless documented to the contrary in the station records? A, the station custodian. B, the third party participant. C, the person operating the station equipment. Or D, the station licensee. Of course, we know the answer is D, the station licensee. This is the end of lesson one, part five. Mark Twain, the author of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn once said, a man who carries a cat by the tail learns something he can learn in no other way. Hopefully learning the rules for your technician license will keep you from grabbing that big cat called the FCC by the tail. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning.